we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, your goodness to us. Thank you for your love. God, in all of our ways and all of our circumstances, we acknowledge you and we lift you up, O oh God. Lord, you are the highest. You are the king above all kings. You are the Lord above all lords. We love you and we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you that you never fail us. You never leave us or forsake us. But your love abounds from generation to generation to generation. God, we thank you that you are here with us as we gather together in different places with different people. In your name, you are there, oh God. We praise you and we love you. We thank you for your goodness to us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right. Welcome to church, everybody. I know it's a little bit different than we were last week gathering all together, but I just want to greet you guys online, say hello, whether you're at home or with your friends or... Uh, just on your phone by yourself, I want to say hello out there. Hello to New Life Fellowship. Thank you guys for joining together with us. Thank you for uh, meeting together in the, in, the, in the presence of God, in the name of God, and lifting him up in your hearts today. Today we're going to continue on in our series about evangelism. And as we move towards Christmas. It's kind of a unique Christmas this year in that we, it, it's, things are very uncertain. We, we don't know whether we can meet together with big groups or small groups or that, but the spirit of evangelism, the spirit of reaching out, the spirit of loving and caring and looking, in, on, looking to others and at others with compassion is still something that we can do, even in spite of the situation and the circumstances around us. God has a great plan for us. We've talked about that in this series a lot. Uh, we've talked about uh, Matthew 28, verse 19, where it says, Go into all the world and make disciples. Making disciples, going, not just thinking only about ourselves in our relationship with the Lord, but looking, how can I touch? How can I uh, uh, make a difference in other people's life? How can I look outside myself to others and have an impact on their lives and bring them to the, to the God who loves us, to the God who cares for us, to salvation in Jesus Christ? Today, what we're going to look at in this series, uh, in this message today, is some tips of how we can lead people to Christ. Some things that we can do practically that it's not a formula where you have to do this, 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 and this in order to get this. God's kingdom isn't like that. It's not like a, a mathematical formula where you add this plus this and it equals this. But there are some attitudes. There are some things that we can do and prepare ourselves for in order to have an impact on people and to be ready to share the gospel with people and to bring them to salvation. The first thing that we can do in, 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 in our relationships with people and how to bring people to Christ is to build relationships with people. Knowing people and building relationships with them. Think about Jesus. You know, Jesus was from the town of Nazareth, and that was near the Sea of Galilee. And he lived there for most of his growing up years. And um, I would imagine that he knew a lot of different people in that, in that village and in that area. He lived there for uh, close to 30 years before he began his ministry. I imagine that Jesus had a lot of relationships with people before he called the disciples. And I bet you 
that he knew. Peter, James, and John, he knew their families probably. He would probably go to the, the shores of Galilee and maybe just walk along the shores and some of the business dealings that he had and people that he knew, people that he was, uh, that his family knew and the relationships they had in those villages. I bet you that he had a real good, he, he knew these people before, before calling Peter and Andrew and James and John as his disciples, he probably knew their lives before he called them as disciples. And the same is true with us. You know, God has put people in your lives and God has put, God has given you influence in certain people's lives, whether it be at your workplace or whether it be at your school or maybe it's in your neighborhood, your little community or your village with your neighbors. God has given each one of us influence and we can use that influence to know people, to build relationships with them, and to develop a, a, a good friendship with them in order to bring them to Christ. Building relationships requires that we spend time with people. Spending time with people, sometimes it can be awkward. Sometimes we don't really know what to say, or maybe we feel shy, or things like that. Um, Last year, we also talked about uh, relationships. One of the things that we talked about in that is how to build relationships with people. Sometimes it's difficult or awkward meeting new people and having, uh, uh, having to have new conversations with people and tell them, new, uh, tell them things about your life for the first time. One of the, one of the um, tips that we talked about in, when we, in that relationship series was how to, um, how to have a conversation with people. And there's four things that we talked about in that series, and it's in the acronym FORD, F-O-R-D. And these are things that you can ask people about when you have conversations with them. The first would be, for F, it would be family. Well, ask them, what's your family? What's your family? Do you, you know, do you have... Uh, are you married? Do you have children? How's your mother and father? Are they passed away? Are they still alive? Where are they living? Where are you from? Getting to know people about getting to know about somebody's family is a good way to start a conversation with them. The next thing would be uh, O is for occupation. What do they do for a living? What do they? Uh, what is their job? What's their career? What's their future? The next would be uh, recreation. What do people do? for uh, just to have a good time? Do, do they like to go and spend time up in the, up in the mountains and the hills and walk, walk in nature? Or do they like to go shopping? Or do they like to, uh, you know, go down by the riverside or different things like that? What do people do for recreation? When you ask people about that, it's something that's easy for people to talk about and they can share their ideas and then you can share your ideas about that as well. Uh, and then the, and the last one, D, would be for dreams. What do people see in the future? What do people want to see happen in their own future? So Ford, F-O-R-D, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Good way to get to know people, to have a conversation with someone for the first time. And it will also uh, generate responses from you so that you can tell them about your family as well, your occupation, your uh, recreation, what you do for recreation, and also dreams. So that's to get, getting to know people. In order to lead people to Christ, we need to get to know people. Pray for, pray for people as well. When we pray for people, even when there are enemies, when we pray for someone, our heart gets drawn to them. Our heart goes out to those people. And when we spend time in God's presence, praying for someone, asking God to do a miracle within them, asking God to touch their lives, we start to develop a heart for them, a compassion, a longing to see them grow into their relationship with God. And so getting to know people, but also begin to pray for people. The next thing that we can do, and this is super important because this is the beginning of showing people how God has affected my life, and it can be, and it can be something powerful where people are drawn to God through 
the story of what happened in our lives, and that is sharing your testimony with people. So get to know them, pray for them, but also have ask God for an opportunity to share your testimony with them. What is a testimony? A testimony is basically the story of what God has done in my life, what God has done for me personally. You know, we can have, we can read the Bible and we can, you know, talk about the truths of God, but when it comes to a real life experience and when someone sees the life that God has given to me and what he has done in my life, then it becomes real for them and it begins to open their eyes to what God can do in their life as well. In the whole book of John, book of John is an interesting book. Because as you read it, you look for different themes in that book. John talks a lot, and he uses the word testify. Testify, testify. Testify is a big word that just basically means to tell the truth about something or someone. And all through the, all through the book of John, we see different people who testified about Jesus. And they testified. We, we see right from the very beginning, we see John the Baptist testified that Jesus was the Lamb of God. We see uh, different miracles that Jesus did that testified to the power of God in Jesus' life. We see <clears throat> God himself testifying about Jesus. We see uh, in, in the story of when Jesus met with the uh, demon-possessed man, even the demons testified about who Jesus was. And we see all through the book of John, different miracles, different people, different circumstances were testifying about who Jesus was. And when you get to the end of John, <clears throat> the last or one of the last chapters in the book of John, in John chapters 20, uh, John chapter 20, verse 31. It says, these things were written. So this is John summarizing his book. And he says, these things were written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And so all of these testimonies, all through the book of John, John says, the reason I'm telling you these testimonies is so that you can believe. So that you can believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He wants the reader, he wants the people who read the book of John to have faith. And that's what a testimony does. A testimony puts seeds of faith in people. Put seeds of faith in people. And God wants to use you to put seeds of faith in other people through your testimony. Let's read 1 Peter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter 3, verse 15. And it says, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. So Peter's saying, always be ready. Always be prepared for, for, for the time when people are going to ask you, what is the hope that you have? Why do you have hope? What is the hope that you have? Always be ready. Peter says, always be prepared with your story of your life, with the story of your hope, with the story that Jesus, the miracle that Jesus did in your life. Always be ready. Sharing our testimony shows the transformation of God's love and power. Before I was like this, then Jesus came into my life, and now I'm like this. Before things were like this, and now things are like this. This is what my Jesus can do. And when you share your testimony with somebody, it begins to make them ask questions. What can Jesus do in my life? Or maybe they're in a hopeless situation, and you share about what happened in your hopeless situation when you met Jesus. Maybe they begin to think, they were hopeless, I'm hopeless, they met Jesus, now they have hope. What if I meet Jesus? Then I'll have hope. And so always be ready. Prepare yourself. It's not just something where you stand and wait, okay, yeah, when someone asks me, then I'll tell them. No, it says be prepared. Be prepared means get it ready. And so I want to encourage you, 
Take practical steps. Get your testimony ready. Get your story ready. Maybe you think about two or three main points. Okay, this was what my life was like. I used to think like this. I used to do this. Then Jesus came into my life. I was led to the Lord. Now I got saved and water baptized. I'm in a life-giving church. Think about all of those things and be prepared. Just like Peter says. He says, be prepared. Don't wait for someone else to come and ask you in order to start writing out your testimony. I would encourage you, go home. Write out your testimony. Get it ready for that time when you can share it with somebody that you know. We can also lead people to Christ through our actions. You know, earlier in the year, we talked about the Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan, because of his compassion, he didn't just walk along the other side and pass by the guy who was needy. He said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I'm going to bandage his wounds. I'm going to take him to the place where he can get help. I'm going to put him up on my own donkey, take him there. And provide for him. Sometimes, a lot of times, most times, leading people to Christ requires action. It's good to pray, but it's also good to do. We act upon the faith that we have. Help meet people's needs. Sometimes it's just meeting somebody's needs. Maybe you know of a family and the mom, and the mom is sick and no one else uh, no one else in the family knows how to cook. So get some dinners ready. Take them dinner. Take some food over to them. Maybe the father has lost his job. Maybe he got injured and he can't work. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Think about it. God, how can I help this family who doesn't have an income right now? Maybe you buy them a big bag of rice. Maybe you buy them some food to help them through that time until they're until the father can, can go back to work again. There are so many needs out there. And I want to encourage you, we don't, have to be, we don't have to feel burdened by every single need that we, that we meet. But I would encourage you to go and meet some needs. Make a difference for the one. Make a difference for one person. Make a difference for one family. Because God has put us in this world as people of hope. God has put us in this world as people with a future, with a hope, with a destiny. And people in this world who are hopeless need hope. So God has put you where you are, in the communities where you are, knowing the people that you know for a reason. So use those opportunities and spread the hope that God has put within you. In leading people to Christ, we, we, we know people, we pray for them, we share our testimony, and we do actions. We meet people's needs. You know, this is sometimes the way that I think, a lot of times the way that I think. Sometimes it's good to pray for people, but you know what? Sometimes God has put the miracle in your pocket already. Maybe that person needs a miracle but, you know what? Maybe that miracle is sitting right there in your pocket. And if we just say, oh yeah, I prayed for them, that's good enough. No, maybe it's not good enough. Maybe God says, I put those finances in your pocket for a reason. I put those things there. And it's our job to take those finances, get those things out of our pockets into people's hands so it can be a miracle in their life. What if God has put it on your heart. And because of your fear or because of any other reason, you say, no, I'm, I'm just going to pray for them. Then that person will miss out on their miracle because you didn't get your miracle out of, their, out of your pocket. Think about what you can do to be a blessing to people. Matthew 10, 13 also says that when we go from place to place, declare peace over people's lives. If we think about the word peace, and we don't have a lot of time to go into all of the words in the Bible that talk about peace, but 
People need peace. People need peace in their, in, their, in their bodies, in their soul, and in their spirit. In their bodies, people need peace if they have sickness or disease or something's broken or there's pain. They need peace in their bodies. People need peace in their souls. This is probably the biggest area where people need peace. Things aren't right on the inside in the way that they're thinking. They just don't have hope. They don't have a future. They're, they, they feel a lot of turmoil and un, unsettledness in their, in their souls. People need peace. People need peace in their spirits, in their relationship with the Lord. Something's missing for them. They need that peace. God wants us to be people who, are, who bring peace and hope into people's lives. And the last thing that we can do in leading people to Christ is invite them. Invite them over to your house. Invite them into your world. It's good to, you know, know people. It's good to have relationships with them. But when we invite people into our world, we're saying, come on in. I'm, I'm inviting you as a person. I'm inviting you as a friend to be a part of my life into my home for a meal or for a coffee. Or maybe you invite them to, uh, you know, go have a coffee at a coffee shop somewhere. But invite them into your world. Invite them to church. Many people have never had, they've never been to church for the first time. Invite them to church. You share your testimony, tell them what God has done in you, and now you can say, okay, this is what we believe. This is the God that we experience on a weekly basis. Invite them to small groups. Small groups are a great place for them to meet other Christian friends as well. They probably only have, you know, one Christian friend, you. They need more Christian friends in their lives. So invite them to small groups. And invite them to read and study the Bible together with you. God has put us in this world for a reason. He didn't just save us and take us to heaven because he needs us in this world to reach out to others. That's part of the, the Great Commission. It's the, the purpose that God put people in the world is to be a blessing to other people all around, them, uh, around us. And doing some of these things, knowing people, praying for them, sharing your testimony with them, actions, helping meet their needs, and inviting them into your world. Doing these things, it's not a guarantee. You know, it's like I said at the beginning, it's not a, a mathematical formula, you know, one plus three equals four. It's not, it's not like that. But doing some of these things, having a heart of compassion, opens people's hearts to the God who loves them. And doing these things will, it will, energize your Christian life as well. Because sharing, sharing the God that you love with other people will improve, will, will, will help to grow your love for God as well. Because you'll be able to see what God does in their life. Be, you'll be able to see the transformation that happens in them. And that's what it's all about, evangelizing, seeing people grow in their, in, in their relationship with God, in helping them to get connected with God. That's why God has us here. That's one of the reasons why God has us here. Especially during this Christmas season, and I know it's complicated with COVID and everything like that, but there are still ways Keep reaching out to people. Keep meeting needs. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear paralyze you from doing the things that God has called you to do. God loves you. God loves us. And God loves the other people that still don't know him, but he has put them in your world for you to have influence on them and see them brought into a relationship with God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. We think back and we think about the days 
when we did not know you, when we were far from you in our hearts. But there is a story in each of our lives. There is a story of your love and of your goodness, of your miracle that you have done in our lives, O oh God. And God, we want to see that story multiplied in all the people around us. So we say to, to you today, God, we say, use us. Use us for your glory. Help us in our relationships with others. Help us as we prepare our testimony, the story that we tell people about your love and goodness to us. God, you are so good, and we want other people to know your goodness too. Lord, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your gentle encouragement in our lives. And God, we want to grow into people who are strong and say, this is who my God is. Use us, we pray, this week, this month, this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining together with us today. God bless you. Bless your week. And we'll see you again next week. Amen. God bless you.